Okay, you can take this any way you want. It's not an assault on Einstein, it's an assault on physics, and it's an assault on the scientists that allow things to happen that they don't question because they uh, don't question them. So that's what the assault is. So don't assault me for going after Einstein. Now this is light, and this is a, a, a disk of light that is obviously being accelerated and exploded into white atomized, what we think it might be Cherenkov radiation, and it you can see that it, it starts to step down in what probably are quanta. Now, this, I, I, I am not against anyone. I just want reality. This is obviously accelerated light. That's something Einstein said couldn't happen. Uh, and I have to, I have to, I'm going to sound like I'm attacking Einstein, but it's just a fact. What I'm telling you is going to be facts. And if you could attack me, attack me. Because that's what I want. I want reality. And if I'm in not reality, show me I'm not reality. I'm going to show you what I think reality is. All right, this is my picture of reality. There's the sun. The sun vibrates like crazy. The electrons from the sun, no photons, they're electrons. They achieve escape velocity. They go spinning off the sun, and the speed of the spin dictates the, the angular momentum, which dictates the, the, the um, impact that they'll have, which is the mass. So they all weigh the same thing, they're electrons, and they claim they weigh 0 0.00055 atomic mass units, so they start out at that weight, and it's dependent if they're slow spinning, like this, listen, or they're fast spinning. This has much more power than that one will. Now when they, in here, they don't hit anything, so what are they going to do? They're nothing, they're just dark, that's why they're dark energy and dark matter in space. When they hit something that they can react with the nucleus, then the photoelectric effect takes place, which Einstein talks about. But it's not nothing hitting something. It's something hitting something. It's how sp speed of this electron is and how much it will drive away ra radiated light. So what happens is that electron's coming in fast enough. If it's fast enough, spinning enough, and the angular momentum gives it enough impact that it can drive out electrons, it will drive some away and it will shake the other ones and the other ones will be heat and the ones driven away are light. From, this, from the moon you get these very 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 long wavelengths because it's re-radiated. So you can only get reds, uh, uh, reds will look black down in the, uh, from moon. Anyway, that's how that, that's my world. Now I'm going to show you what Einstein's world is. Alright, here's Einstein's world. Now, this, is, this is normally I do rocks and so forth, but this is, uh, this is important. Now, Einstein says E equals mc squared, and he says that the, well, that underpins all of physics. That is the underpinning of all of physics, and it is 100% wrong. He says that light has zero mass. That's insane. If it has zero mass, that means it is nothing. That, and then he says, a, 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 Albert Einstein says, light has a constant speed. That's insane. I just showed you it can be accelerated. We know it goes through water. It slows down. So that's wrong. He also says it's a photon and there's a photoelectronic electron emission. That means nothing, zero mass, came down and turned into something. It's wrong. It's an electron. He also says light is duality. That means nothing and something at the same time. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, just a, a not working equation. If, if mass had no energy, I mean no, I mean if uh, light had no mass, so this is a zero, it means there's no energy. The c squared has absolutely nothing to do with anything because he says that it all goes the same speed and if it did, that is exactly like saying times one. All I can tell you is that it looks to me like it was, it was just a, an equation to make everybody see the C squared and, and, and the water fell on the floor when they saw that. And they knew, oh, this must be right. Well, no, it's just totally insane. And they, not one single physicist will, will discuss this with me. Not a single one. And I'm showing, showing light experiments that literally prove them wrong. And I'm going to show you how light screws through and how that double slit experiment works. I'll, I'll show you right now. All right, there's the accelerated light one again. You can see the disk, it's, it's starting to get sucked right into the Venturi. And it's a Venturi. That means it, it compresses the light that's coming into it, and it, it's nowhere for it to go, because light is literally a liquid. It's, a, it's, a, it's some form of a liquid that comes through, and it becomes compressed and crushed in here, and it turns into chaos. I'll show you those shots in a second. 
Let's see. Uh, let's go back to here. Hold on. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. Now, I, this is this is coming out of the accelerator. This is the only shot I've ever seen like this. And you see this? This is still high energy. It's still a little bit shaky, freak. You know, it's it's in chaos, and it apparently is coming through here, it collided with this disc, and ejected this, which looks like neutrino ejection or something to me but it's it's if, if these are the particles and these are the size of the discs and that is a mini disc it means that light can be subdivided so electrons are not the smallest particle okay these stunning uh, photos are done by Rod Warren who works in Australia and um, works with very basic equipment and uh, a, a tremendous um, just a relentless scientist and he works in the dimensional area he doesn't do the physics stuff like I'm showing you here but uh, I'm using his photos because he is exceptional at this I have the same equipment here but I cannot get the, the, the results he's getting as well as he's getting them so I'm using his stuff but you see even over here this is this this looks like a, a, a new this neutrino effects and that's the kind of stuff that we're seeing this rods picking up in his photos so I'm gonna go through this and you see what you think now, this is another one he did, and this is after the Venturi. This is a back plate, and the light is spinning, spinning, spinning. And as it enters through the Venturi, which is way up here somewhere, it, it, it makes this pattern of a circle. And that's what goes out here. So if it comes through here, it, it, it shows up here. If it comes through the bottom side, it shows up over here. If it comes through at the middle, it, it starts glowing more in the middle. It's just the concentration of impacts of particulars, individual electrons start to build up a pattern and they trail out and they get thinner and thinner out to the sides. That's that's the way of, um, and they thought it was due to some interference patterns and so forth, but it's not. It's due to the fact that as it spins, more will impact earlier in here and further out ones will, will be less. It's just a number of impacts. Now these are trails. Each one of them, I believe, is, a, is an electron tube and you can see as they come out they're sort of separated and then they begin to crush as they come. This should, indicates a right hand spin with a left hand drift and you can see that they, they get tighter and tighter and tighter as they go along. This is one one single strobe of the same particle and, it, and you pick it up as a trace. Now that one there is just a standard disc that comes out and it doesn't, it's not accelerated it's just floating. Rod picked up this uh, very very interesting this is where the accelerator is the light came out through here and and when, as it slows down you get this effect and it happens in red and green you see those? Those are you know, look like electrons to me or some kind of a particle and you see these the white and the dark that's obviously energy no energy and the little spikes up here and here it looks to me like it's a torus and as it's it's flip-flopping in the torus, which is called um, uh, inductive capacitive reactance. So one side crushes it and the other side accepts it, and then it flips it and flops it. And, and there's a, a reactive uh, effect when, when um, the, the, it, the field is crushed. And it can push back in, in, in the stuff I used to work with. If you had a, a solenoid, and you energize that solenoid and when it shut down it would kick back 10 times the applied voltage so if you put 12 volts in and a guy was holding it and this happened <laughs> one time I said hold it works it's only 12 volts and when I let off on it he jumped up in the air he saw that hurt and I said holy smokes I looked it up yeah it kicks back uh, uh, 10 times the applied voltage so somewhere it's 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 oscillating itself inside of a torus I that's all I can tell you that's what I see all right, that's from up above the accelerator. It comes out in this white glow. It starts to turn orangey and then spins off in its red plates. All right, this is where you should come. Science Theory Challenge. It's on a Facebook channel, a uh, Facebook group. And uh, there's also one here that is um, the mud fossils, which this all started from mud fossil research in materials. And... Um, and it led to light research and it led to you know everything so what you need to do is go to these two and sign up and then go to Mud Fossil University on um, on uh, YouTube and here's Mud Fossil University so 
this is what you need to do and go up here and learn. Just come up here and there's no, you know, we found uh, Triassic feet. And they're actually feet. There's no question they're feet. And, um, you know, we have all of the details. I mean, this is... Uh, this is stuff that you can't okay, you can't I'd deny like this. They're finding okay. DNA now in everything because we started to talk about mud fossils. So now they're going into mud and finding DNA. It's the fossils that have the DNA. They're finding stuff that's leaked out of them. So it's it's turned into sort of a, a zoo atmosphere. But we are the original mud fossil. I, I, I discovered the mud fossils in 2012, and I did all the research on them. And now it's 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 pretty much pretty much solid and uh, and now there's a lot of people jumping in thinking well this or that and, and uh, it's just got to be started to research in a in an orderly manner and and uh, academics won't do that so I'm hoping somebody will all right and so contact me